Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. He's helped me to transform, to be transformed into the image of God, which is God's purpose for my life. I have the faith now to be able to stand through anything that I go through. I know that I'm going to come out victorious on the other side because of what I've learned through this ministry. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to a special edition of The Gospel Truth. Again today, I'm going to be playing a teaching that I gave in Phoenix, Arizona during our Gospel Truth Conference in January of 2021. And I'm talking about how to stay positive in a negative world. We definitely are living in a negative world where all of the bad things are being amplified and the good things are being diminished, and you need this teaching. I think it'll really help you, and I just thought it was so good that I wanted to put it on our program. So watch this. At the end of the program, we'll come on and share with you about how you can receive this teaching that will help you stay positive in a negative world. If I could talk to every one of you in here, there's some of you in here who live this way, but the vast majority of Christians and even the Friday morning attendees the majority of you let your mind be controlled by what you see, by what you hear, instead of by the Word of God. And when you run into trouble, you just either sit there and stew in your juices and let it bother you, or you run to somebody else and ask for help. You don't know how to encourage yourself in the Lord. I'm telling you, this is how you do it. You take the Word of God and you meditate in it until it begins to rejoice your heart. It'll work every time. And this is awesome. If you believe what the Word of God says, if these things are true, there is no excuse for any of us being depressed and defeated. I don't care what's going on in the world. Doesn't matter who's president. Doesn't matter what's going on. Amen. If you can't say amen, say oh me. And then it goes on to say, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Did you know when you get into the Word of God, it'll you can see differently. It'll change the way you see things. It'll enlighten your eyes. People that aren't in the Word of God are like people that are walking in the dark. You just can't see everything. It's just a matter of time until you bump into something or fall over something or trip. But when you're in the Word of God, it enlightens your eyes. It enables you to see things. It goes on and says this, uh, right here. It goes on in the next verse and it says, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Man, I could say a, a, some great things about that, but there's not a lot of things that are clean. Man, there's just impurity. Even if you find a movie that you kind of halfway like, there's going to be some little piece of junk put in there. You know, I heard a story about a pastor one time that his son wanted to go to the movies with some of his friends and he came and asked the pastor and says, could I please go to the movie? And he says, what's it rated? And he told him and he says, no, that's not the kind of movie I want you to see. And his son, well, everybody else, the deacon's kids are going. And he says, he says, uh, I just don't want you seeing that kind of stuff. He says, there's just a tiny bit of nudity. There's just a few words. It's just a little bit. Overall, it's good. And he said, no. And so anyway, to compensate, he told his son, you can invite your friends over to the house. And so he had them over to the house and they were playing in the backyard and he made some brownies and he brought them out. And I mean, they were hot out of the oven and he, was, he gave them to the kids. And man, the kids took these brownies and he says, now before you eat it, uh, I just want you to know that there's a little bit of dog poop in it. There's not much. It, you won't even taste it. It won't make you sick. It won't bother you at all. But I just want you to know there's a little bit of dog poop in there. <laughs> and of course, nobody wanted to eat it. But see, this is the way a lot of people are. Well, there's just a little bit of badness in it. And so I'm going to take it and eat all of this nudity and hatred and strife because overall it was good. Man, the word of God is pure. It's clean. It endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Again, there's very little in our world today that's true and righteous altogether. At the very least, it's got contamination in it. It goes on to say, more to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. 
Man, if we believe that, how much effort do you put into making money? How many hours a week do you spend working? How much time do you spend thinking about ways you could make money? We ought to be putting more time into the word of God and then prosperity will come as a byproduct. You know, Jamie and I, I, I am not the sharpest knife in the drawer. If I, I've said this often, if I was God, I wouldn't have chosen me. I haven't got the talents, the abilities, the charisma that other people do and stuff like this. But you know what? We have put the word of God first place and we have sought God more than we've sought gold. And because of it, God has blessed us. We have, did you know, I don't normally, I probably shouldn't, even, I won't say this because I shouldn't say it. But it is phenomenal the amount of money that God has flowed through my hands. It's, it's miraculous. And it's not because of my great intellect. It's because I put first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things are added unto me. If you are short of finances, you know, there's a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 that says, God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. If God can get it through you, if you will sow it, he will get you money. If you are short of money, it's because God doesn't see you as a sower. He sees you as a taker. Because he said he gives seed to the sower. If you're short of money, the problem isn't that you need more work or more of any of this stuff. The problem is that you haven't put first the kingdom of God and your heart's not right. If you become a sower, if you will open up your heart and say, God, I want to bless the kingdom of God, God will give you money. He made a promise. He would give seed to the sower. Not many people like that. Many people are saying, but man, I need it as much as anybody. It's not a, he doesn't give seed to those that need it. He gives seed to those that are sowers. And the good news is one hand to receive and one hand to give as the money flows through, there's always plenty for you. You'll always have your needs met, but it's not the focus. If you are wanting money for yourself, you're hindering God's supply towards you. Amen. Amen. I get all of that out of these scriptures. We should be seeking the word of God more than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. I can guarantee you, most of us love food more than we love the word of God. Amen. Job said, I have esteemed the word of God more than my necessary food, more than my daily meals. All you got to do is look in a mirror, turn sideways and tell that most of you love food more than you love God. And then in verse 11, it says, moreover by them is thy servant warned and in keeping of them, there is great reward. Man, the word of God will warn you. John 16, 13, the Holy Spirit, the comforter will show you things to come. He will prepare you for things. You know, my staff, I got to admit, I didn't see this coming, but my staff did. My staff saw the, the, the shutdown that was going to happen. And I, I kept telling people, I said, this is not an issue. This has less, this virus has less uh, effect in the flu and stuff. And I just didn't see it as being a big thing, but my staff did. They had prepared. And when the governor of Colorado shut down and told us we couldn't come in to work, my staff, they saw it coming and we were only offline for six hours. And they put things into place to where we have, I think it's 145 people in the phone department and they could take calls from home. And did you know we set records, we had over 557,000 calls in 2020. We set records many months or at least a couple of months. We went over 50,000 people because the Holy Spirit showed them things to come. Amen. And we were prepared. If we hadn't have seen that coming, if we could have been offline for weeks, months trying to get this stuff together, it could have, it could have sunk the ministry. The Holy Spirit will show you things to come. The Word of God will warn you and give you insights. Man, 
man, that's awesome. The Lord spoke to Jamie in 2008 to take the money that we had. Her dad died and we got an inheritance and put it in the stock market. And the Lord spoke to her in January of 2008, take your money out of the stock market. In, in the fall of 2008, the stock market crashed and went down 50% and we avoided it because the Holy Ghost will show you things to come. I tell you what, if you aren't spending time in the Word of God, the Word of God isn't showing you and revealing things and warning you and showing you things to come and you're just, it's just weird. Why in the world would you do that? The Holy Spirit is sent to show us these things. This is how you keep yourself encouraged. The Word of God will encourage you. It'll build you up. It says, uh, who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. The truth is you can't Run your own life by yourself. It says in uh, Jeremiah 10, 23, Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his own steps. You aren't smart enough to run your own life. And I know that that's offensive to a lot of people. And they say, oh no, I'm, I'm awesome. Well, that's one of your problems. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18 the way to make your life work is to humble yourself and say, God, like Solomon, God, I'm a child. He was the king of the nation. And he says, yet I'm a child. I don't even know how to go out or to come in. Please give me wisdom. And man, that pleased God so much. He says, I'm not only going to give you wisdom, I'll make you the richest man that has ever lived on the planet. And it's because he humbled himself. God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. You need to recognize that I can't understand my own self. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. The word presumptuous here is talking about pride. Sins of pride. Sins of doing things my own way. Brothers and sisters, most of the people that I pray with, I'd say 90 something percent of the people I pray with, the problems that they've got were self-inflicted because they did it their own way, because they've been leaning under their own understanding. And God loves you and God will help you even through that. Praise God. There's a lot of times I've done dumb stuff and God has pulled me out of it. I'm not saying that that means you just have to sit there and suffer through whatever because you caused it. No, God will help you. But I'm saying we could get to a place to where if we would walk in the word, we wouldn't have these presumptuous sins where we just live our own life and make a mess out of our life and then run to God and ask him to clean it up. It'll prevent those kind of things. So it'll keep back that servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me, then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. If we would trust God in those small things and not do all of these daily things that we do on our own, it would keep you from making the major mistakes and having these great transgressions. Let the words of thy mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Man, the Word of God ought to be the meditation of your heart. You need to meditate in it day and night. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Everybody wants the prosperity and the success, but they don't want to meditate in the word day and night. They would rather go watch as the stomach turns on television. They would rather be doing something else. If you want the results, you got to spend time in the word. Let me use this one last scripture over here in Luke chapter 21. This is the same thing that I was reading from Matthew chapter 24, where Jesus was talking about the signs of the end times. And he was prophesying that the moon would be turned into blood. The, the heavens would fall apart. There would be famines, all of these kind of things. And down in verse uh, 28, it says, and when all these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. I want to focus on the part where he says, then look up and lift up your heads 
And because of time here, I'm not going to turn over and read this, but in Mark chapter six, I believe it's verse 41 is where Jesus fed the multitudes with five loaves and two fish. And he took the bread and the fish and he lifted up his eyes to heaven and blessed it. And if you, if you look at that word in the Greek, it's the Greek word anablepo. Blepo means sight, to see. And the word ana means again or twice. It's a compound word, anablepo. And so it means that when he lifted up his eyes, he saw twice. And I've meditated on this. And what I believe is he looked at this little bit of bread, this little bit of fish, and it wasn't sufficient. So he had to look past that and see into the spiritual realm. If you've ever looked through a, a what do they call those 35 millimeter camera where you focus through the lens. And if you look through there, if you were at the zoo, you could either focus on the fence that's in front of you and everything in the background is blurred, or you could focus on the animal that's on the other side of the fence and that uh, fence just disappears. You can either focus on what's near or focus on what's far. What Jesus did, because what he had in his hand wasn't sufficient to meet the need, he looked beyond the physical and he looked into the spiritual to see what was available unto him. And because of that, he broke this bread and fish and he fed 5,000 men, not including all the women and children. And there was more left over after everybody had seconds, thirds, as much as they wanted. There was more left over than what he had to start with. You know why? Because he was able to look beyond. He was able to see twice, to see into the spiritual realm instead of just being limited to this physical realm. And so that's what Jesus is talking about. And when he says, when you see these things come to pass, look up, lift up your heads, look beyond the physical that you're seeing and look into the spiritual and see these things. One of my favorite passages in scripture is in uh, Daniel chapter four about Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar wrote the fourth chapter of the book of Daniel. A pagan king wrote a chapter in the Bible and he was lifted up with pride and because of it, God made him like an animal. And for seven years, he lived out naked. The man who was the strongest man, the greatest man on the earth, because of his pride, he became an animal, lived naked. His hair became like feathers. His fingernails became like claws. He ate grass for seven years. And at the end of the seven years, he says, then I looked up. It's that exact same thing. And it's more than just talking about he inclined the, his head in a certain direction. No, it means he finally saw beyond the physical. And he says, now I recognize that God rules in the affairs of man and puts the basis of man over it. He finally realized he wasn't exalted to be the strongest man because of his great goodness. It was just the grace of God that put him there. And he saw beyond the physical. And you can take this same thing and go all the way through scripture when it talks about people looking up. The eighth chapter of the book of Mark it talks about the man that he prayed for. And he says, what do you see? And he says, I see men as trees walking. Then he laid his hands on him a second time and made him look up. He saw beyond just with the physical, he saw into the spiritual and that's when his eyesight was completely restored. You got to be able to see beyond this physical. There's a whole world out here that exists that you can't know with just your little peanut sized brain. The only way you can really see into the spiritual and, and perceive everything is through the Word of God. The Word of God gives subtlety to the simple. It makes you wise. The Word of God is just awesome. If you want to encourage yourself in the Lord, if you want to be positive in the midst of negative stuff, you need to become a Word person. You need to become controlled by the Word. You need to get to where the Word of God, you know it better than you know the stock market figures, better than you know what's happening in the natural realm, better than all of the, you know, the stuff that's going on in this world. We need to get to where we know the Word of God more than anything else. 
And again, I want to commend you for coming out to a conference when there's so many other things you could have been doing. You're headed in that direction. But I can guarantee you just dealing with people that still probably the majority of people in this auditorium today are more influenced by what the world has to say than all of the newspapers and things like this than you are by the Word of God. We've got to reverse this process. And if you want to really be positive in a negative world, you're going to have to get to where the Word of God is more real to you than the Word of a doctor, than the Word of a lawyer, than the Word of anybody else. Amen? Yeah. And you can do it. I had a woman come to me this morning and ask for prayer for something. And I said, well, that's something that I can't pray for. You've just... She was wanting to get rid of doubt and unbelief. And I said, you can't cast doubt out. You have to replace it. It's like you have to put faith in and drive unbelief out. But you can't just rebuke unbelief and just cause it to leave. You have to fill yourself with faith. And so it's not a matter of just you getting de you know, determined and God, I'm seeking you and I want you. You could be sincere but you have to know truth. It's the truth that's going to set you free. Amen. Prayer is important, but prayer is not a substitute for knowing God's word. If you don't know God's word, I can guarantee you, you'll be praying wrong. And you will just open yourself up to a lot of problems. It's good to go to church. It's good to do all of these things, but it's not a substitute for you knowing God's word. You need to get to where you can encourage yourself in the Lord your God. And the number one way that I do that for 53 years now has been to just stay in the Word of God. I'm still studying the Word as much as I've ever studied in my life. It doesn't ever get old. Amen. So Father, we thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the truth. Thank you for the people that have died, have given their life to translate the Word of God Thank you for all of the things that you've done over hundreds and hundreds of years to have the word available unto us. And so I'm praying that the things I've shared today, that you would quicken this to people, that they would see the importance of it and that people would make a commitment to let the word of God begin to dominate their lives. Thank you, Jesus, that they would make a commitment to study the word of God like never before and build themselves up. Father, I pray that this happens. And I believe that as people receive this, that this will keep them positive, regardless what's going on around. It'll keep their mind stayed upon you and it'll keep them in perfect peace. Father, we just thank you for this. We agree and receive that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today you saw a portion of Andrew's teaching titled, How to Stay Positive in a Negative World, recorded live from the Phoenix Gospel Truth Conference in 2021. This product that we're offering on how to stay positive in a negative world is something that you need. I can guarantee you we need to guard our hearts against this or our love will wax cold. So I've got DVDs that were taken from the conference in Phoenix. I've got CDs where it's the audio teaching of that. And this is just my teaching on how to stay positive. But then we have these CDs, DVDs, and a USB that is the entire conference. And I had Dennis Burke with me who taught three messages with my four messages. You could get the entire conference and so we've got multiple ways for you to get the entire conference or just my teaching on how to stay positive in a negative world. Listen to our announcer as he gives you all of the details. This complete teaching is available as a CD or DVD album. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website at awmi.net. Also available today is the entire 2021 Phoenix Gospel Truth Conference, which includes sessions from Andrew as well as Dennis Burke. This entire conference is available as a CD or DVD album or on a USB flash drive. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of just $49 when you contact us. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. 
While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or you can call our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. You know, the Lord has given me a huge vision and we've been blessed up to this point, but I've still got so much that God's leading me to do. I'm believing God for 10,000 new partners. We've already got over $120 million worth of buildings in just the last nine years, but I've got at least $100 million worth maybe $200 million worth of buildings still in my heart for our students, for an activity center. We've got a new student housing that we've got a preliminary drawing of that is showing you a little idea of what it would look like. This one would house about 120 people. Our others are gonna be smaller with maybe somewhere around 40 people per dorm, but we need this student housing and we need people to become partners. I'm believing for 10,000 new partners. I would ask you to pray about it, and if the Lord says so, join with us and help us change people's lives through Karis Bible College. God has provided healing in His atonement just as much as He provided forgiveness of sins. There's something about pressing against something and believing that it's possible before we see it in the natural. Grace enables us to do what only Jesus can do. It's the enabling presence, the enabling power of God. View the amazing true stories of five individuals that were considered to be lost causes. Yet in their darkest hours, God showed them His amazing love and grace. Discover for yourself the transformative power of the gospel with our Grace Encounters Volume 2 DVD. To purchase your DVD today, go to awmi.net slash graceencounters. Did you hear about our website? We designed it with you in mind. Now you can browse on all your mobile devices. Everything is where you would expect it to be. And if you can't find something, the search bar will. It's fast, easy, and it just makes sense. Check it out at awmi.net. <laughs>